Why is the light so yellow? I don't know. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm just waiting for people to get on. And then we are going to get started with our special guest. You all know who it is because the description says so, but I'm keeping it mysterious, I guess. Um, so we're just going to wait for a minute or so. And then we'll get started. Oh, hello, everyone. We are rolling. Hello, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, wherever you are in the world, let's start with asking where are you guys coming from in the world? Make sure to comment down below and let us know. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that today we have a very special guest that I'm very excited about. Um, she's an amazing uh, model turned photographer. We're going to talk about that. And yeah, she's here with us now. So let's let me introduce um, Jessie. Hello, Jessie. <laughs> how are you? How are you doing today? I am great. I'm great. I'm chilling. You know, it's it's a beautiful day out here. I'm in Dallas, Texas right now. So COVID, you know, the numbers are spiking back up again. So we're kind of like going back in lockdown, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But I did start shooting again. So I'm very excited about that. But I'm just gonna have to do it safely. You know, I'm constantly staying protected now because things are getting so crazy out here. I've limited my traveling. I used to go back and forth, you know, to LA. I am going to LA next mm -hmm. week to shoot, but I did have to limit some of my stuff. But yeah, no, things have been good though. We're making it work. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just introduce you quick for those of you who happen to not know Jessie. Uh, I'm going to share her work here very quick. Um, and we're going to go here. I'm going to show your Instagram. Instagram because it's the easiest. So this is Jesse's work. It's absolutely incredible. You have some mad skin tones and some mad editing as well. I love it. Oh, thank you. It's just that well, I saw your skin tones and I was like, oh my god, I'm in love. This is this is like love at first sight. I like, yes. like look at this photo. Oh my god. Like look at this. I love color. I love oh color. her skin, her hair, her face. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then you get to and then you shoot with some plus size models, which I think is amazing too, yeah. because I think like with swimwear and models, uh, like plus size models, it's not that common. No. Um, so it's great. So it's great that you have that in your portfolio as well. Okay, we're gonna go back until, um, so we don't get any nudity on there. So we don't get kicked off. Okay, we're gonna get back there. So um, I think to start, maybe tell us a bit about, uh, about yourself. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, you used to be a model, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you so how did that happen? How did you decide to switch like from being a model to being a photographer? Just just yeah. tell us more about yourself. Yeah, okay, I got a story for y'all. So we're gonna take it even further back. Okay. <laughs> so um, you know, a lot of people actually don't know that both of my parents they're artists. So okay. my mom, she used to work in corporate America, she's retired, but um she's like really into pastels and that's like her hobby but she's very serious she has a whole art studio like even to this day she's working on her pastels my daddy's passed but he was a photographer like all his life photographer wow. sculptor, a painter like everything under the sun graphic designer he was even a cartoonist for like our local newspaper um in st louis so like it's kind of funny i know kids probably have or you know adults have memories as a kid like going to the zoo going to the park like with their mm -hmm. parents like we did that but like we actually were growing up in art museums going to my dad's art galleries um art shows all that fun stuff um and so i was exposed to art at an early age and i definitely found like an appreciation for it but i was mm -hmm. never considering becoming a photographer ever it was like not my path i was like oh my dad's you know artist and that's that um and you know i saw him struggle too we don't have social media right now where we're able to really like get booked for yeah. jobs. i get booked for the majority of my jobs through instagram it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing i love it he didn't have that so i didn't really have a desire to be a struggling artist you know at that time so you know, as I'm getting older, I'm in high school. Um, I ended up taking like a photography class that I didn't even 
take seriously whatsoever. I mean, I borrowed some film cameras from my dad. So I was doing film in the day. Um, we were developing our own photos, uh, but it still wasn't anything I was interested in. And then mm -hmm. as I got older, I got to college. I focused on like business and marketing. And, um, but I started um, sketching and drawing, like just on the side, like when I get home, I would sketch. And I've always been fascinated with just like skin and high contrast, like poppy, you know, mm -hmm. art pieces. And so I remember one of my first art pieces and people are gonna laugh and I know people all over the world are like tuning in, but DMX the rapper <laughs> in the US, it was like the first person I decided to sketch. Um, it was like this amazing photograph in Vibe magazine and I was just so captivated by it. And I was like, wow, I wanna start drawing you know, some of these images that I see in the magazines. So after I graduated from college, um, I ended up moving down to Dallas and that's when I got exposed to modeling. So I was still working in corporate America, mm -hmm. making shit money. I wasn't making any money. And um, I needed a side hustle. I was, I've always had a hustle mentality, like make money, like do things on my own. Like I've been very like independent all my life. And from there, my girlfriends that I ended up running into, they exposed me to the whole modeling world. And down here in Dallas, everything's bigger in Texas, okay? So <laughs> the glamor modeling scene, it's booming out here. And I ended up getting into it. I liked it, but it's still, you know, and I did it for several years and it was fun, you know? Like I was like, I get my hair and makeup done, I get to wear bikinis and shoot and all that stuff was super exciting to me but it still didn't feel like that was my path. And I started taking notice of the photographers and what they were doing. Now, I never asked them too many questions, so I didn't really learn like all the technical stuff, but it got to the point where I was, if I was doing a shoot, I would start you know, creating mood boards. Um, and even I would ask the photographers, which is something that I would never like expect any of the people that I shoot today do, I would ask them for the photo so I can edit them. Okay. It's not, it's not so <laughs> uncommon though. It happens back in the day, like, I had an eye, but you know, back in the day, I remember it was like, everyone was over airbrushed and it was like super Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And I wanted like more of like a natural, you know, effect, but I wanted like the images to be, you know, like eye catching. So yeah. I would get some of my own photos and then I really started getting interested in like the photography aspect of it. And I was like, okay, I think I have an eye and I think I can make some money off of this. So one day I decided, and when I go in, I go all in. So everyone's different. Some people, you know, pick up a camera and they start from there. I was like, go big or go home. So it's kind of funny. I didn't have any money at the time. I was like pretty broke. And I decided <laughs> to pick up a job. I, I took a side job working bottle service at a club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, this is my story. I can't even lie about this. And I ended up doing bottle service and stacking up money. And I would literally put like money in a shoebox. And I mm -hmm. saved up like over the year. And I ended up getting all of my equipment all at once. I did tons of research, you know, figuring out, okay, if I'm gonna, if I'm working on a budget, finding the best camera, uh, the best lens, and starting from there, getting some really good lights that I can do some stuff at my house. And, and what did you actually go for in terms of the equipment and the, the lighting? What did you start with? Yeah, so I actually started off shooting with a Nikon camera and it okay. was, it was probably a few months after I was like, uh, let me test out Canon. Mm -hmm. I love Canons. Like it's just, you know, that's a personal preference. Everyone has their own preference as far as like equipment goes, but I love Canons. I ended up getting a 5D Mark III, which, you know, you guys are gonna think it's kind of crazy. I still use it to this day. Like yeah. that's my main camera. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's some equipment junkies out there. They're constantly getting new equipment. I am very big on working with what I got. And I, yes, I love like looking at new equipment and testing things out, but um, 
at the time I had to work on a budget. So I'm still using that camera to this day because it works for me. I'm like, if it's not yeah. broken, don't fix it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really big on glass though. So, you know, I have my zoom lens and I still, I mean, the same zoom lens that I got with that Canon camera, my 24 to 70, I still use to this day. Religiously, mm -hmm. the best mm -hmm. thing ever. I mean, because most of the time I'm in conditions where I can't, I don't have a lot of space to shoot, you know? Yeah. And that has worked wonders for me. And I actually like, you know, sometimes I like prime lenses and I do have a prime. Um, I do have an 85 millimeter. I have a hundred as well for my beauty, but I don't mind the distortion. I think it's kind of cool. Like I like playing with that stuff. And sometimes I like my stuff distorted and sometimes I don't. I like to switch it up and keep things, you know, original, different and keep myself on my, to on my toes. So yeah, no, it's been, it's been pretty cool. So I've been shooting for, uh, seriously, maybe like five, six years now. Um, and I started of course, like a little bit further back from there, but, um, yeah, it's been an amazing experience, like a really awesome journey. I am trying to do some really big things this year, despite COVID, I'm not going to let it stop me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, it's very interesting what you said, because, you know, from my perspective, I have a very similar um, outlook on gear. And, you know, there's like running a YouTube channel and get so many people and like, because I, I test out gear quite a lot. Yeah. And there's so many people always asking me about gear and like, what should they buy? What should they upgrade? And as you said, I feel like the best camera you can have is the one that you know. Yeah, um, for sure. And and it's like, it's the one that you understand. And it's like, if you get familiar with the camera, it just becomes an extension of your hand and it becomes so much more comfortable for you. Exactly. Um, it's also funny because we have pretty similar lenses. I do use my 24 to 70 pretty much most of the time. And then I have a hundred mil for my beauty as well. <laughs> yep. It's awesome. And those are my go-tos. Like I literally have three lenses. And they yeah. work for me. They work wonderful. And I think, and I think that's amazing because it shows that you don't really have to have a massive budget, and you don't really yeah. have to, you know, pay an arm and a leg and a kidney to to be a photographer. You know, and oh, yeah. there's nothing wrong with you using the same gear over and over because it's like, as you said, as long as it's not broken, there's no reason to fix it. You know, yeah, like exactly. yes, you get tempted with new releases and when you see new stuff. But to be honest, yeah. I I've never really been like that. Oh, yeah. Um. So in terms of, tell me one thing in terms of locations, how do you find Dallas? Because I don't, I don't, I can't imagine it's a very like swimwear. Okay. So friendly location. And, and it's funny because, you know, anyone that's ever interested in getting swimwear photography, just realize that if you are in a location that doesn't have a beach, you don't have to tell yourself why well, I can't get into it. You can still get into it, but you have to be resourceful, you have to start um, brainstorming and getting creative with how you do your shoots. Like I've literally like created a sandbox and made it look like they're shooting on a beach. I have um, made it look like someone is shooting in the water and they're literally in a kiddie pool and I just lit it up real interesting to make it look like they're in a pool. Um, we actually have a volleyball sand uh, court out here in the middle of downtown Dallas and I've shot okay. on the sand and they just happen to have a few palm trees and we make it look like we're shooting at the beach. So you yeah. can be creative with it guys. Um, and if you're willing to do a little bit, little bit of traveling, like Austin is like right around the corner from us. There's like lakes out there, even Houston. I mean, it's close to a beach. I mean, it's not an ideal beach, but it's something to work with. Um, we even have lakes out here in Dallas and um, mm -hmm. we've made it work, but I do some traveling. That's why I do say that I'm Dallas LA because I go back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it is required to, you know, shoot elsewhere. I shoot in Mexico a lot too, just because like the waters are just beautiful out there. They're crystal clear, super blue, but mm -hmm. sometimes people don't have the budget for that. So we do make it yeah. work. You know, you got to get creative. And I'd say for LA, you probably have access to to more models as well, like more variety of models. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they're all flying in and you get new faces every single day. Um, and, you know, I, I'm speaking to anyone that's like interested in getting into this or they're just starting, you know, you can uh, find models through Instagram easily. I mean, it's that's that's where I started. 
you know, just reaching yeah. out to people. I started out reaching out to my friends. I got some beautiful friends. So <laughs> I got in that area and I would literally invite them over to the house and be like, Hey, like, I'm trying to test out all my equipment because I don't want to look, you know, silly out there trying to get clients and I don't know what I'm doing. So I started, you know, working in my apartment in my second room and uh, testing out lighting. I would literally get like, you know, different fabrics and stuff and put it behind them, mm -hmm. play around with things um, and trying to test all types of lighting situations. Because if you look on my page, like it's a lot. Of, I try to do different things in every shoot. Mm -hmm. I try to. Um, and again, there, there are some photographers out there that are one trick ponies. Like they got their one style, they get booked for that and that's fine. Like that's what they do. I want those people, I try to keep it interesting. I try to do all types of stuff because for me, I'm trying to get booked for more, you know, jobs yeah. I'm trying to get more clients. And I want to show how, um, skilled I am in different areas when it comes to fashion, mm -hmm. beauty, swimwear, all that. So, yeah. So in, in terms of your style, um, because you know, I've, I like first thing that I saw on on your profile was your swimwear. But um, do you, when you started, did you have any preference, like in terms of shooting fashion or swimwear or beauty? Like, how did you how, how did you figure out like when you were starting out which style and what kind of photography did you like the most? You know, it's funny. I'm just now um, like focusing on just solely swimwear and beauty photography because I used to dabble in other things. I have shot men, in fact. Um, after I, you know, started shooting, one of my friends just happened to run a men's magazine catered to men of color called Crave Magazine. Okay. It's a national magazine and they were getting some really cool like people in there and we would shoot in Dallas and then we would also travel to different parts of the US and shoot different uh, celebrities. And so I was focusing on men for like a pretty like, long period of time, probably like a good year, year and a half, I was focusing on just shooting men, like shooting fitness and fashion, all that fun fun stuff. But uh, uh, then it trickled over into beauty. And then my girlfriend just happens to run this amazing swimwear line and we started shooting her swimwear. And mm -hmm. I found a love for both. And I, I think I'm just gonna focus on both of those things. Cause I, I really, I would say, that neither one of them is my favorite. Like I like them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And I actually have different techniques for uh, what I do and how I shoot, depending on if I'm shooting beauty and if I'm shooting somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. um, somewhere I try to scale it back. I keep it a little bit more raw where like the beauty, my particular clients that book me, they want something that's a little bit more um, touched up and perfect and all that. Mm -hmm. I am trying to try different techniques and scale back and like focus on like less is more um, in 2020. So, mm -hmm. and in terms of, yeah, you definitely do with COVID, <laughs> less is more. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, um, in terms of your um, your beauty, because um, most of your stuff is shut outdoors, but um, do you use natural light only? Do you use any modifiers? Do you use flash? Oh, yeah. How does it usually work? Yeah. So, um swimwear i actually shoot majority natural light um mm -hmm. like once every blue moon i have to bring in some modifier you know some light source just to help out because we have super unideal conditions but i rarely bring one in and i try to work with what i have i'm all about embracing the light you know so, so for example sorry to interrupt you for example um photos like um, like this one, for example, would that be shot in natural light only? Do you have any reflectors? Do you have any? Well, that particular one, we actually did use a light. And okay. it's because all the, for majority of the images that I shoot somewhere, like I, I really would rather work with like limited, you know, equipment because mm -hmm. a lot of times just me, I may have an assistant if I'm lucky, but if mm -hmm. it's just me, I got to work with what I got. Um, mm -hmm. But that one was a, uh, like a soft box and I didn't draw too much light on the subject because I wanted to keep it natural. This one's natural light, not even mm -hmm. a reflector, that one. That's crazy because when you look at them, like in terms of lighting, it's pretty much the same. Like you wouldn't be able to really tell the difference between the two. 
Exactly. You could say easily that this one is exposed or like, you know, brighten up the same way. So um, in terms of shooting then, do you have any specific, um, for, for swimwear especially, do you have any specific um, times of the day that you stick to and so on? Um, so you can get like that yeah. nice light? Yeah, so the crazy thing about it is that a lot of those images that you pointed out were in the most mm -hmm. unideal like lighting conditions. Like I probably mm -hmm. shot those at like one o'clock, in between one o'clock and like four o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. during the day. A lot of the times, like I don't get lucky to shoot early in the morning or during golden hour. And I love those times, but sometimes the client doesn't consider that when they're doing. They never do. They never yeah. do. It's like, they're always like, let's start at 10 a.m. and then shoot. Right. And you're like, no, that's the worst time. We should be finished by exactly. 10 a.m. Exactly. Like if we could get started at like six o'clock in the morning, I'd be happy. But yeah. That yeah. never happens, mm -hmm. and like you know, things get off track as far as scheduling goes. So you have to learn to embrace the light and just kind of appreciate what you got. So like I, during those hours, I know that I'm gonna get like hard light, heavy contrast, and I've grown to love that. I love mm -hmm. the heavy contrast. I love um, how colors pop out um, with the shadows. So. Yeah, I've learned to embrace it and I work in any condition. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I find that too, especially if you do like the contrasty look, it does give you really beautiful contrast and like the, it makes the colors pop so much more. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips for people in terms of how do you go about um, if, for example, you know, you're shooting with a girl and she's getting like loads of harsh shadows on her face, loads of panda eyes, is there anything that you do to yeah. kind of avoid that situation? Is there anywhere to do it so I kind of make it feel or make it look better? I, I will try to find areas every once in a while with shadow, um, you know, so we can like get some images where it's not super harsh. But mm -hmm. a lot of times if I'm trying to avoid panda eye, I will tell the makeup artist like, let's go ahead and strip, let's take off the eyelashes. Cause I, I don't need lashes on during like, mm -hmm. a shoot, cause like that heavy shadow underneath is yeah. so really distracting and then a lot of times i like it when the models are actually closing their eyes so during those unideal uh conditions like in the middle of the day i'll do a lot of closed eye shoots and i'll have them work the shit out of their poses where you're not even thinking oh wow all these images their eyes are closed like it, it wouldn't even be a thing like they don't think about it because like the poses are different we're going in different locations so i do during that time sometimes try to get like eyes closed shots so if you go back to my instagram you'll see yeah yeah that's the thing and then i, I guess because maybe i have it's another I guess another great thing is like having, you know, stuff even like this, this one here where they have sunglasses on because that kind of gets rid of the, the harsh shadows as well. And I've done that before myself. Uh -huh. where, um, oh yeah. Where, yeah. Um, yeah. You're like, the skin looks so beautiful. I just can't, I'm just like, there we go. Closed eyes. Where are we go. going? That was, that was literally probably like two o'clock. In the middle of the day, sun beating down and down. You can, you can see, you can see because you can see the the long like um, shadows underneath her mm -hmm. chin and so on. They're still, I'd say, because you were using like additional lighting, it did soften it out a lot, which is which is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So then, for your work, for example, for beauty work, especially stuff like that, do you retouch it yourself or do you um, outsource retouchers? How does it usually work? Yeah, so I actually retouch a lot of my stuff. Um, I mm -hmm. outsource every once in a while, but if I do outsource, it will be for basics only, nothing creative mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I actually touch every single image that goes out, and. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I'm so particular and I have a certain way that I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want my reputation to get ruined by a retoucher that's like doing it like totally different style. One of the things that I've learned too is like some retouchers, they do too much retouching um, and maybe their standards of beauty are different. So like they'll fix things that I don't think need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to do a lot of liquefy on bodies and faces. Like I like to keep them as natural as possible. So, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I had I had this in a similar situation the other time. I was using a retoucher and she liquefied the hip dips in the model and I didn't even realize it because yeah. I wasn't even looking at it because, you know, the hips were still round because she had like pretty like white hips. Yeah. And she just got rid of the hip dips and somebody was like, oh, why did you 
why did you liquefy the hip tips? I'm like, I didn't even notice because I was concentrating on her face so yeah. hard, like make oh, sure yeah. her face looks good. Yeah. Um, so I, I totally understand it. I guess from my perspective, I have found like we touchers that because I was the same like uh, like two or three years ago, like I would not let any image go through. Mm -hmm. But the only problem with me is I really hate retouching. So it's like this, yeah. this. Oh, I just, I just don't have the patience for it. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's I don't know, I find it really draining. So I did find retouchers that really work really, really well with my style. Yeah. Um, so that's the upside that once you start working with regular people, you do know what to expect of them. And you still have the oversight to see exactly. what, what their images look like at the end. And you can tell them change things or you can change things yourself. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. as far as like, you know, outsourcing again, like I'm like, keep it basic because I still have, um, a particular style that I like, um, with the rich skin tones and like the heavy contrast and keeping mm -hmm. things kind of, like, colorful. Um, and so I have to be in control of that. So creatively, mm -hmm. I just I'm wanted to show people this image as well. Sorry. It's so yeah. beautiful. I, oh, I've wow. seen it like, uh, Thank you. Thank, so, you. Thank you. So gorgeous. Just like the contrast. I, I just really like how you're able to keep, you know, like the dark skin, the yeah. super light, um, um, you know, um, ground, the water. So there's so many contrasts in this image, but yeah. everything is balanced so well. And yeah. I feel like, especially when shooting, I feel like a lot of people struggle with this when they are shooting in a very bright situation with mm -hmm. maybe like models that are like really dark skin, like, like in this um, case, it's kind yeah. of very challenging for them to keep the balance even where they either don't yeah. uh, underexpose the model or overexpose. So, right, right, right. Yeah, you know, when I'm, it, that's funny that you choose that photo. That was shot at like an apartment pool, like at a, an apartment <laughs> complex. And we yeah. made it look like it was done at this like amazing mansion and we just made it happen. Mm. And, um, but yeah, with those images where you're dealing with like, um, that heavy contrast and if people are scared to shoot women of color um, just know like when I'm shooting I try to make sure that there is enough information where if I need to brighten things up or put, like bring it down and post I'll do that I do a lot mm -hmm. of selective changes like so if I need to bring out their skin more I will selectively you know do that with mm -hmm. just their skin and not the overall image so I do a yeah. lot of changes like that I, I do global changes at the very end but it's not that many I do more selective stuff within the and image. in terms of and in terms of taking the photos um, I personally over like um, always underexpose my images mm -hmm. do you do the same do you yeah. overexpose I do. I prefer that. So, because once it's blown out, you can't get any of that information back. So yeah. I do try to bring it down, but you know, I, I, I'm constantly checking my images cause I want to make sure that I don't have a black image either that I can't, you know, mm -hmm. get information out of, of that. Course. Yeah, no, I definitely keep it more underexposed and then I'll do selective mm -hmm. changes within um, the image and posts. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your um, process of retouching, um, do you use Lightroom, do you use Photoshop? How do you color grade? Do you do skin first? Do you color grade first? How does it work? Yeah, okay, that's a good question because I know everyone's so different with this. So <laughs> I actually yeah. like use, I just started using Lightroom mm -hmm. like, this year. I mean, it's crazy. Like I just don't use it a lot, but I know that there's a need for that for doing like global changes on like many images at once, but I'm like, like Photoshop, I'm pro Photoshop. I do that all day, every day. But I have um, a specific order that I work in every single time. I do skin mm -hmm. retouching first. Um, and then if things do need to get liquefied, um, I do that at the very, very end. Um, and I do very, very minor liquefying, it, 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 if any at all. Um, and after that, that's when I start making the color changes because I would hate to you know, start changing colors and then realize that I don't like the coloring. Cause that for me is probably the part that's most difficult. Cause I feel like that's what gives it the wow factor, at least for my images is making sure that there's like a, uh, that balance that really draws people's eyes into the photo. So I do the color mm -hmm. corrections and the color grading at the very end. So if I don't like it and I do sleep on my images, so I will like retouch an image and I'll sleep on it for a couple of days and look at it and be like, do I still like this? And if I still like it, then I'll post. 
and then I'll send it to the mm -hmm. client. So yeah. Yeah. And in terms of um, in terms of retouching for skin, uh, what what do you use? Do you use dodge and burn? Do you use frequency separation? How does it usually work? Combination of the two. Um, you know, beauty is a little bit different. It's a lot heavier handed, a lot of frequency separation, dodging and burning. But for swimwear, goodness, I mean, that's why I love swimwear so much because you can like scale back and keep it simple, stupid. Get rid of the acne, get rid of, you know, a few scars. I don't even get rid of stretch marks. I actually love stretch marks. Mm -hmm. Stretch marks are beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I go into my color grading really early on, really early mm -hmm. on. Like, I want to keep them as natural as possible. So, yeah. And what terms in terms of color grading, what do you do in Photoshop? Because obviously, you know, I I I work completely different or the other way around to you. I always color grade my images first. Yeah. Then I usually send them off to retouchers and then I do maybe final changes in terms of color. But I color grade all my images in Lightroom and then obviously uh, for skin uh -huh. retouching use Photoshop. Okay, okay. So um from your perspective, what do you use in Photoshop to color grade the images? Yeah, so I mean I'm doing a lot of stuff where I'm controlling, you know, the hue, the saturation the contrast I have different techniques for every photo um, mm -hmm. again I really like when there's a color that jumps out on the image so I'll pick like one or two colors that I really want to stand out like there's an image that I just put out recently that people really liked because the model was super chocolate but her swimwear was neon and it was literally like blinding on the image it's mm -hmm. really cool but I made sure that I um, you know, brought the colors out in the swimsuit to mm -hmm. you know, give it that wow effect. Um, yeah. Every time it's different, I'm trying to do something different because I'm still trying to keep myself on my toes and keep things unique. So I would highly suggest to everyone, play around with different techniques and determine what you like, but don't you don't have to get stuck on that certain style. If you wanna switch it up again, by all means, go for it. I feel like there's no rules in art or photography, just go for it. Like I am all about um, being inspired by my work. Like I have to look at it and if I really am just like, wow, I'm feeling this, like I'm really happy with like the, the final product, I'll put it out. And that's the way you mm -hmm. should be feeling about your images guys, like that are watching this, you know, when you are doing your photography, shooting with whoever, you're not always going to be inspired by, you know, some of the stuff that you do. You're not always going to be super excited, but, you know, for the most part, at least your creative stuff, you should get really excited and um, it should keep you on your feet. Always try new things. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm one of those people, I don't like to be simple when it comes to, you know, my, my techniques. I'm just, constantly trying to challenge myself so yeah that's great yeah that's important um actually funny enough i just saw um irene uh, hello irene hello my youtube wife is here she said two goddesses of photography um irene actually just posted a new video today um doing a review on her canon r5 and r6 and she did a shoot i presume the behind the scenes is still coming irene can confirm or deny where she shot with those um she basically took photos uh, like studio style and then she had this like colorful neon thing that she was like painting around the model yes. and just creating the most beautiful yes. shape yeah. it was amazing watch the behind the scenes it's really beautiful I know that. yeah so, okay definitely definitely got yeah it very cool. it's really cool and it's like it's so nice because it's so out of her comfort zone so she fun. doesn't do stuff like that she's she's yeah. a bokeh queen like natural light but like she killed it it looks amazing so yeah. um Baha is asking, how do you go about color grading an image, whether it's beauty or swimwear? Is a style color scheme determined before a shoot or do you decide on uh, on it once you get to post-production? Always post. I always wait to the end. I'm so indecisive when it comes to coloring. In fact, I spend more time trying to figure out what colors I'm going to bring out and enhance or change. Um, that takes me so much time to figure out because there's so many different alternatives to how your image could look at the very end. So I wait to the end, that's just me. And the reason being is because I'm indecisive when it comes to coloring. I wish mm -hmm. I could do the color grading early on and just be like, that's it, I'm happy with it. But I've <laughs> found a lot of my images have been like, I don't like them anymore, I need to, I need to switch it up. So I make a mm -hmm. lot of tweaks. Like if I highly suggest, like if you just start out, sleep on it, I still, to this day, I'll get opinions from my family. I'll send them images be like, hey, you like this? 
like rip me apart. Like I need you to give me like <laughs> real raw, like yeah, I need real and raw feedback. Get you get some good friends that aren't gonna lie to you and tell you your images are amazing, or if you need, you know, you need some work. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I I've definitely had some really good people in my corner that have helped me um, you know, determine like if this stuff that I'm trying to put out is worth even putting out or if I need to make tweets. Mm -hmm. Because at this day and age, anything we put out, that's marketing, you know, for us and our business. Yeah. So I am very big I, on quality over everything. You know the saying that you are only as good as your last shoot. I think that's the kind of um, approach you have to take. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're an amazing photographer, if you put out a shit image, exactly. it will tarnish your reputation. So you do have to like, that's why I you know post on Instagram maybe once every and like and now it's well now it's a bit of a different story because I'm not shooting at all but like even when I am shooting regularly I only post like maybe twice a week or something because I want to make sure that the image I put out is the strongest image I can potentially put out and not just any image just to fill up my feed exactly exactly yeah um Shafiq, Shafiq is also a lot of stuff oh what was that sorry Shafiq is saying I feel the same way too coloring is a whole different game altogether um oh we have steve asking question for you uh like you i'm a pro uh photoshop so uh when editing a series of images in photoshop how do you keep the overall color scheme the same it's such a pain in the ass <laughs> um so i'm gonna assume you're talking about off one set of images from like maybe like a camera yes so yes the recent shoot that i did with the two amazing chocolate models oh my goodness they were heaven sent just amazing to work with um yeah for a share somewhere sure. you know because we were working in you know these crazy lighting conditions you we all know like depending on the time of day you're shooting that color of the swimsuit could look completely different you know mm -hmm. so i literally before i even send images to a client I do a full on comparison of all my images to make sure that the colors look very similar because the last thing I want, especially when you're shooting like fashion and when people are really particular about colors, I don't want people to say, uh, this color looks nothing like the, you know, mm -hmm. that I just purchased. What's up with that? So I do try to make sure that I'm doing a comparison after like, you know, sending the images off. If I'm lucky, you know, we, we all got the clients that they want the images as you're editing them. They want to put things out immediately, but if yeah. they're able to wait, make sure you take a look at the full body of all the images that you're mm -hmm. working on, make a huge comparison, make sure everything looks pretty similar. Most of the time, you know, even if it's a little bit off, people don't notice that much, you know, but if it's really off, you know, make those adjustments at the end. Um, you know, cause even when it came down to skin, we all know skin is going to change like, you know, from morning to night. So I, I wanted yeah. to make sure the temperature was still consistent throughout. So mm -hmm. I did make changes and I would take those color, um, the, you know, the color grading changes, I would drag them over to other images. I'd be like, this image doesn't look the same. So I would have to make additional tweaks. So that's something that's helping out. How do you also deal with, because uh, for example, the, uh, like I, I shot uh, a, a campaign um, not so long ago mm -hmm. and being, being here, the weather changed literally every three seconds. It was sunny, it was windy, it was rainy, it was cloudy. Mm -hmm. And I found, even though I work with Lightroom, which is obviously a bit easier to, to color grade consistently, just because there was so many different weather conditions throughout the day, it was such a nightmare to color grade uh, uh, at the end because you know when you shoot in full sun yeah. versus when you shoot overcast mm -hmm. it's pretty much impossible to make it look equally as warm because it's not the same yeah. so if you're ever in a situation like this how do you make sure that you, you know, still get a consistent look you know it's there's two things like i always if if the client is okay with those variations then i don't get caught up in it too mm -hmm. much so I make sure like we have those conversations. Like if, if the client is on set, then I'm explaining to them, hey guys, let me make sure this is plugged in so you know. <laughs> so, um, you'll be gone. Yeah, so I wanna make sure that the client has full knowledge that the sunlight is gonna impact the coloring of their skin and the swimwear. And I try to make sure that, you know, 
if they are okay with it, that we'll continue to shoot even in the lighting conditions that have completely changed where it changes the colors. If they're okay with it, then I'll keep on shooting. But if they're like, oh, I really want that consistency. If we have enough time in the day, we'll wait till that light comes back. We'll take mm -hmm. a break, you know? So it just varies. And so I'm really big on just like constant communication with the client understanding their expectations up front and during the shoot so i can tackle those like at the shoot versus on the back end because the last thing you want to do is do the shoot and now the client is upset that you shot in these lighting conditions i do try and make sure sometimes we tether if we're lucky but that's a rarity on the beach mm. i never do that i have been lucky where we've had you know extra hands on deck, we got a digital tech, but that's, you know, that's a rarity. You don't get that all the time. But uh, for the most part, yeah. you, know, you do show them like, hey, this is what it's gonna look like. You're okay to move on or not. And they'll tell you. So yeah, have those communications with the with the client. And again, because like I embrace all light. So for me, like I can shoot some badass images, you know, in a shitty lighting situation. I'll make yeah. it happen. But that might not be the clients like aesthetic they might not want that so yeah and when you do those when you do those shoots uh, do you usually have clients on set or do you just communicate with them through like whatsapp or you know digitally it it varies yeah it's definitely you know case by case scenario we, i've had i've had it all sometimes the clients are on set and it makes it so much easier if they're available mm -hmm. come on you know because i I will, I am really big on just making sure that they're happy at the end of the day. That's the most mm -hmm. important thing. Cause Hey, happy clients. That means you get booked more, you know, you get more yeah. money. I mean, yeah, I love photography. I love what I do, but I also want to make money doing this too. So you do have to have that mm -hmm. business mindset. Um, if they're able to be there so you can have that constant communication, um, in real time, it's amazing. I, I think it's beautiful when they're there, even if they're like ripping the photo apart. I'm like, I'd rather you do it now than me figure it out on the back end. I don't even care. Absolutely. No, yeah. and it's so much less, so much less stressful. I guess yeah. it is tricky in some extent because if the client is on set sometimes, especially if there's like a bigger team and they all have their own opinion, it's kind of stressful because oh. I feel like anytime yeah. that happens, it kind of like from my perspective, I feel like it takes my personality out of the photo because I feel like I need to please them. Totally. Yeah. And if you're if they're not there, you can just kind of do whatever you want and just sell send them behind the scenes and be like, Yeah, are you happy? And then they, they don't have as much say, but they still have a say. Yeah. So it's definitely it's it's definitely like a two sided, you know, kind of situation. It really is. There's pros and cons to both because it's like, what if the client isn't there and you send all the images? They're like, Oh, we wish you did this. Mm. Yes. So mm. Again, it's all about setting expectations with your client. It's that's the most important thing. Oh, I see Absolutely. one of my friends, EG Beauty Studio. Yes. Okay. So yeah, there's so much makeup. Okay. Uh, uh, oh. he's, he's awesome, and he's worked with me on plenty of shoots. And he's also a beauty photographer too. So hi. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so Roberta has a question. Um, did you get your first clients maybe a bit easier than someone else because you were already in the fashion industry? Can you explain a bit how you uh, did it at at the start with the clients? So I guess what he what he's asking is how did you start working with clients? How did you like? Did you approach people? Did people approach you? Yeah. How how does it usually work? Look here. Like it's still challenging. Like just because I I'm getting clients, I'm constantly in grind mode, constantly in hustle mode. I am reaching out to clients. I am trying to get that FaceTime. Um, you always don't ever get comfortable in this because as soon as you do, you're going to miss out on tons of jobs and opportunities. So I, am one of those people where I was shooting, I was trying to, you know, DM people like, Hey, I would like, when I first started, I DM so many people and emailed so many people offering free services just so I could get that marketing. So for me, yeah. it was worth it. It was like, look, I'm trading my time. They're trading their time, but I'm getting some free marketing. Cause maybe it's like a really cool brand or maybe a like amazing influencer with tons of followers. And all I would ask is like, please tag me, like give me a little bit of love so I can get some clients out of this. So mm -hmm. that helped me immensely. And that's actually what helped kick, kick off my career is by reaching out to people and offering those services. But I saw the value in it. So a lot of people are like, oh, you're giving away free photo shoots. When you first start, like you, you have to somewhere. So if you got other suggestions, let me know. But that's what I had to do to make it happen. And it worked for me. Um, but I, beautiful thing is I got some good images out of it too. So I built my portfolio. 
So, and do you do you ever test nowadays, or is it only paid work? Oh, I I test because I love I love trying different stuff. I'm always trying to test. I don't have time for it like I used to.、Mm -hmm. I have to test all the time now. If I'm lucky, maybe like once a month. But、um, fortunately, that's how you build your book, and that's、yeah. how you make things exciting. Because I think a lot of people don't、yeah. understand that when you're working, you know, they think when you get clients that it's all amazing clients, and like、yeah. a lot of the time. The job might not be that great, but it pays the money. But then you don't have that creative outlet to show your best work. And at the end of the day, as we said, like if you are producing mediocre work for mediocre clients, then you'll never get the good clients. You have to push and put yourself out there and create that extra cool work, you know. And 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 that's how you get things rolling.、Uh, Paul has a question. Yeah,、uh, Jesse, the creative industry is, not, is notorious for not being a nine to five、uh, ex uh, existence. How do you manage your work life balance, especially with a young child? I, I'm looking for an assistant right now. So if anyone knows one, let me know. <laughs> I, I have no my work life balance. I it's crazy. It's been a hot mess. I'm not even going to sit here and front like things have been easy. It's not. You know, I'm juggling. I'm not getting a lot of sleep. But I am finally realizing the power of like getting an assistant to handle all those like email inquiries and you know dealing with those day to day tasks where you got to be stuck on the computer. I'd rather be shooting. Okay,、mm -hmm. so I, I'm gonna get someone to book my stuff, schedule it, where I don't have to worry about that. So eventually, when you get to a certain level, get an assistant. Um, get someone that can help you out because it is it is definitely necessary if you have a family too. Like I got a four year old, so I have been trying to juggle this, and it's been absolutely insane. It has not been easy, not one bit. So,、um, but I'm still making it happen. It's not stopping me from anything. I make it happen. I I am really I pride myself on being as resourceful as possible when you're dealing with situations where you don't have like all the answers. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, work-life balance. I wish I could tell you、uh, something a little bit better than what, <laughs> but、uh, yeah, no, it's been it's been insane. It's been insane, and my solution to that is getting an assistant. That's where I'm at at this point. So, and another question that I have before we continue with people's questions because they're flooding in、um, is how do you find your spot in an industry that is, you know,、uh, we were chatting about it a, a, a tiny bit before we got got on the live where. I was just saying to Jesse that I actually I was trying to think the other day with my friend, and I was like, I know so many amazing black photographers, but none of them are female. I think you're like one of the maybe one or two people that I know that are taking really amazing photos. So how do you find yourself in an industry that is so male dominated, and especially you know as a person as a person of color? Yeah. How how do you how do you find it? How does it affect it? That does it help that you're you know you're you're No, it's、You're, there's not that many of you, or how does it work? Man, it's it's been very difficult, very very difficult.、Um, you know, and I'm so happy we're having this conversation today because it's definitely something that does need to be addressed. So we have to keep on having these conversations so we can see change. You know, as a woman and a woman of color, you know, I, I it's I sometimes feel I have to work ten times harder just to get a job, and it's definitely been difficult. Um, I, again, it's been discouraging, but I'm. It's not stopping me from what I'm doing. Like I continue to move. I continue to try to put out great work. But you know, I, I've definitely had my moments where I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm, I'm not getting booked. Like it, it's constantly, you know, a male counterpart or another white. Photographer, and again, they could all be amazing. Again, I, I pull inspiration from everyone. Like some of the great photographers out there, like that I pull inspo from. There's some black, there's some white. But、um, the thing that was discouraging when I first started it was when I was looking up like great photographers, great fashion photographers, great beauty photographers. I kept on finding like the, it was like the same trend. It was like they're all white, they're all male, or they're all white female, which is fine. Again. Like they're, they're great at what they do, but like we need to start acknowledging some of our black creatives and people of color because I'm seeing just as incredible photographers and creatives out there doing what these great photographers are doing, but they're not getting acknowledged for it or they're not getting booked.、Um, and so I, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. 
like as far as like what needs to be done to really see that change and what it boils down to. And again, this is a personal opinion and maybe I'm preaching whatever and you know, some people might not agree, but what it really boils down to is I feel that the fashion and the beauty industry, those people that are in charge of casting and hiring, they need to take on more responsibility um, to diversify within mm -hmm. the organization um, at these photo shoots, you know, I always laugh, you know, I see some of these companies, you know, they'll hire a black model and all of a sudden they're like, Oh, met my quota. I can check off that diversity box for the day. I did my deed. And you know, it, it's, it's a joke. Like it, that does not count because I laugh when I see these behind the scenes videos, maybe be on YouTube, maybe it's on Instagram or social media somewhere and they'll have, you know, their, their black model, but then everyone behind the scenes is white, yeah. you know, and this isn't bashing white people whatsoever. This is just me and the rest of like my fellow black creatives and people of color yeah. asking for opportunity to be a part of that. Um, you know, we definitely want um, our voices to be heard and uh, we all have really creative eyes as well. And I feel like, yeah, it, it's gonna boil down to the people making the decisions for things to actually change. I can only do so much. I can put out like, you know, amazing work every day and still not get booked, you know? Like it, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's gonna take all of us together to have the conversations and really, you know, the ones that are making the decisions to put this as a priority. And if it's not a priority, mm -hmm. things aren't gonna change, so. And another thing that I wanted to ask you, um, have you ever had issues with, for example, people questioning your abilities because you are a very good looking woman? Was there ever like a, like a oh, like you take, are you the model? Like, what do you do? Are you the makeup artist? Like what's, you know? <laughs> I still deal with that to this day. You know, I, you know, I've definitely, I've earned like a lot of respect within the industry, but I do run into it sometimes. And, you know, I take the high road with it. And again, because I taught myself, I didn't go to school for this, you know, mm -hmm. I'm self-taught. So I'm still learning things every day. You know, I'm not super, super technical, but mm -hmm. I feel like I have an eye. And you can't, if for the most part, like it's hard to teach people like good taste. Like you can teach them like, Mm -hmm. all the techniques in the world, you know, you can give them the best camera, but like they can still take a shitty photo because they oh, absolutely. Eye for it, you know, the composition and like, you know, the styling, like if you don't, mm -hmm. all that stuff comes in place. That's why, you know, again, I keep on talking about, yeah, like talking to the fashion industry and beauty industry. Yeah, you can hire your black model, but let's get some black creatives on the other end or the people of color on the other absolutely. end. Absolutely. An entire team to make an image happen, mm -hmm. you know. That's the thing, and even in terms of you know other things, like um, even in terms of you know doing shoots where the whole brand is like about women, but it's run by men, and it's just like you you have this disconnect of where yeah. you know the best example is Victoria's Secret, where they show you what men kind of wanted to see instead of like what the what the women wanted, and, and that's when you know, when mm -hmm. they have those like directors in charge and they're like, no, we won't charge like, or we won't have plus size models because it doesn't suit our brand and we won't have this and we'll have that. And then they get left behind because it's just like, they can't they can't keep up with the times and yeah. it kind of bites them in the ass eventually. Right. And you know, like I, when it comes to dealing with clients, like one of the big things for me is I always keep these things in the back of my head. So, you know, if things don't look right, as far as like how people are being captured, if we need to incorporate diversity, I will say something, you know, if I'm working with a client and we're shooting like, you know, a beauty campaign and there's no diversity, I will say, hey, you guys need some diversity. Like I can help you out with models. Like I, I will speak up whether they like it or not. And again, I, you know, I talk to them a certain way, so it's not disrespectful, mm -hmm. but I do um, encourage diversity as much as possible, whether it be mm -hmm. bringing on more women, more people of color, all that, because I think together we could create like some insane 
work if there's a whole bunch of different eyes on it and experiences so yeah. that's the thing and I, and I think bottom bo bottom line like you are a very part very important part of the chain of production um in terms of like photo shoots so yeah. if you're a creator that they respect and you will speak up there is a way more ch uh, chance of them actually implementing the changes rather than just like a, a random assistant trying to say something or drop an idea so if it comes from someone who has influence and has power and says it um, they'll be way more likely to listen to it rather than just like some random or like, you know, yeah. person that just wants to like, contribute. Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, let's get back into the questions because we're like way behind. Yeah. Um, so Baha is asking, like um, if, you're, uh, if you're working with a team for Swimwear Beauty and the team doesn't like the color grading, but you do, how do you go about making the entire team happy, but also yourself with the final image? Um, so, and that's why I color grade at the end. That's just me because like I have dealt with that as well. Um, mm -hmm. There are some people that like things more desaturated and like less mm -hmm. contrasty. And so I will make them happy. And I'll, at the end of the day, if you're getting booked, like make the client happy. You know, it's not about like making yourself happy. You're already getting a paycheck. That's my my opinion. But, yeah. um, you know, because you might just, if, it, if it's something that you're not happy with, like don't use it for your book, you know. But if they're paying mm -hmm. you like big money and you want to keep them happy, you want to keep on booking them, like, yeah, definitely take their feedback on. And if you're able to make the image, like, you know, still look like something that you could use for your book, great. But sometimes you're not going to be able to use everything for your own personal um, mm -hmm. book or for marketing yourself. So, yeah, I agree. That's my opinion. But that's why, and that's why you test. So you yeah. can do whatever you want and nobody can tell you anything. Yeah. Um, uh, Sloboden as asks, how much, how much, how many photos do you deliver to a client? How would you determine the amount of photos and how much does the selection process, uh, process last? Um, it definitely varies again, always case by case situation. Um, mm -hmm. every client has like different requests. So you do have to work with it. Um, fortunately I, I have a manager in Los Angeles, so he helps me with like a lot of my bookings out there, which is great, but I do handle a lot of things outside of LA on my own. Um, as far as like delivering photos, everyone has different ways of doing it. Again, and it varies from commercial to personal. So I'm going to assume mm -hmm. that you're asking about like commercial photography with mm -hmm. the client. And, you know, typically, you know, I am sending them all the proof. Sometimes they're taking them on set because they're tethering, like, because we mm -hmm. have such a big set where we have a uh, digital tech on hand to take all the images and I can't do anything about it. Um, but from there, as far as like, you know, the selection process goes, you know, it can vary. Sometimes they're selecting it on set. Sometimes they're taking a week to two weeks. It really, really varies. So it depends what the deadline is because some clients, you know, yeah. like the other the other time I had the I had a um, campaign and it was so many images. They wanted 70 images, uh, which yeah. is a lot because it was like it was it was basically a campaign plus catalog. So you yeah. had to shoot all of them. And basically they needed, like I shot on Friday and they needed the first frontal shots by Tuesday. And it was like three days later. Oh. So they literally just selected the photos like in four hours and I had to have them back and I just had to start editing. Yeah. So I've been there before. That was a nightmare. That was, yeah. that was crazy times when you get stuff like that. It's like plan to not sleep the entire 72 hours because you know, you yeah. clearly, you take a little bit more time in love and care and to each one of your images. You don't yeah. want to, put out anything you know so exactly you know it's one of those things like if you're if you guys are trying to get into this and get the clients sometimes you do have to suck it up sometimes you will have long nights you know and then yeah. you have a little sleep here and there you know I'm still I'm still trying to figure that all out but um yeah I mean it's just a part of the business so that's that's there. one thing that I find it's like that's what I've been always saying to everyone that you know for me, it doesn't matter if I get paid a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars for a job. If I do agree, like the minute I agree on the job, I will put hundred percent effort into it, whatever it means. Okay. If it means you know not sleeping, if it means sitting and like in front of your computer for a whole week just retouching, yeah. I will do this because I agreed, and it doesn't matter if, as I said, they paid me or even if I agree to a free shoot. You know, it's like. Yeah. As soon as I commit to it, I will give my hundred percent. Like oh. there is no half hours jobs where I'm like, oh, I'm only getting paid, I don't know, six hundred dollars, so yeah. I'm not gonna put that much effort into it. Like, no, it's like you agree to it and you do it, or you don't do it at all. Yeah, I I've always liked the saying, your network is your net worth. And just remember, anyone that you shoot, they're gonna tell their friends, their friends' friends. 
I mean, that's how you're going to book clients. So every experience needs to be special, no matter who it is. I'm definitely there with you. Uh, some of, I have so many repeat clients and they all range from like, you know, people that have never shot before. They like never show any of their photos. They just do <laughs> it for themselves. And then I have like these big time clients and like, you know, I get repeat clients because I give, I try to deliver excellent service to every single one of them. I don't treat you differently because maybe your budget's less or mm -hmm. because no one knows who you are. You're not like this huge brand. Like I do not care at all. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we have another question from uh, uh, Flow Shop. Um, so how do you train your eye to be able to tell what you need to change in terms of color? Mm -hmm. How do you know what to add or subtract? Is there a color scheme or is, is it just a gut thing or both? Um, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of both. And then I'm also just like pulling inspiration. I'm constantly, I'm sure all of us as photographers, we're always like saving photos and putting them in our little box of like inspo. And I'm, I actually have like an inspiration folder of just like color grading, like skin, mm -hmm. skin tones, like that I really enjoy. So like, there's a model that I shoot all the time. Her name's Chastity. She's on my page all throughout. Yeah, I'll, let's, let's see. Um, She's the first one that you see at the very one? top. Yep. With her eyes closed. I shoot her all the time. Her skin tone mm -hmm. is different every single time. And I do that on purpose because I like all the skin tones. If you scroll down a little bit mm -hmm. further, there she is again. And like, Here? I try, yep, that's her. And um, I try to do different stuff each time. So sometimes I'll bring out like the blues in the skin. And this is just specifically mm -hmm. her, like, you know, bringing out purples mm -hmm. and blues in the skin. Or, um, you know, sometimes I'll keep it a little bit more desaturated and then, um, you know, but I'll still keep it rich. And then some of them, oh yeah, she's in this. Uh, if you scroll up a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, she is that image with the, uh, the star the hoodie. She's there too. Oh, and this one, this there. one. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. I love the editing as well. It's like such a nice, yeah, so uh, that was natural light and I really was going for that high contrast look. So I did some selective um, mm -hmm. editing and I desaturated her skin and then I enhanced the blues and the purples and the pinks to really make mm -hmm. it pop. So again, uh, every image, I'm actually trying to do a little bit like something different, even with it, the same model um, mm -hmm. on different shoots. What do you do with unhappy clients? Uh, hmm. Yes. So another one, how do you deal with unhappy clients if you ever do have them at all? Um, I haven't had many and I'm so thankful for that. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with handling expectations up front with your clients, always mm -hmm. understanding like who they are and what they want. And if you're ever uncertain, if you go into that shoot, still not knowing what you want or what they want, then that's the problem. Um, you have to be completely clear. Like there's many a times where, I have had clients, they'll tell me what they want. It's literally like all over the place. And I'll be like, okay, let's work on this. Let's figure out exactly yeah. what you need. Like, let's work on a mood board. I'm very visual. So mood boards actually work wonders. In fact, if they're able to deliver a mood board to me or we can work on a mood board together and they can hand pick, these are the images that I like, then I can be like, okay, I know exactly what you want. Cause I have that visual. So it's so it's so important because yeah. I feel like a lot of the time clients have certain expectations that might not be achievable a lot of the time because yeah. they have this like you know huge commercial campaign view yeah. in their head and yeah. then you know so if you have a mood board it helps so much because you give them they give you a clear indication of what they want and then you can follow it much easier rather than just going in the dark being like, oh, okay, I think this is what they like. And they like something completely different. And then you're like, oh, okay. Right, right. And I even dig deeper with these mood boards. I actually live off mood boards because that really helps me as a visual artist to understand what people mm -hmm. like. And I dig deep where if they send me an image, I ask them, what do you like about this image? Was it the lighting, the styling, the makeup, all the above, the type of model? Because I, when I put together mood boards, like I get crazy with it. I'll be like, here's a mood board for the lighting. Here's a mood mm -hmm. board for the styling. Here's a mood board, mood board for the makeup, the hair, yeah. you know, everything. I mean, um, I've had 
people they'll send me an image and they it'll be like a black and white image it'll be like oh i i send that to you because i like the hair but i wouldn't even know if i didn't ask the question mm -hmm. you got to talk you got to communicate with your client every time absolutely yes. um nice. so uh, uh, tapian is asking uh jesse question do you ever get nervous when it's actually time to shoot or find yourself abandoning the initial plan oh hell yeah hell yeah dude i feel like as photographers, sometimes I feel like I'm going into a game and it's like a you know a football game or a basketball game and it's game time. As soon as that shoot starts, like I say a little prayer to myself, like don't fuck this up. Like, <laughs> like I, it's so serious to me because especially in these big shoots where there's a lot of money involved, um, mm. it definitely is like game time. Perform at your best. Be on your toes. Be prepared for anything. Be prepared for things to not always go right. You know, and I don't want to put that out there. Don't have that negative mindset. But all I'm saying is be on your toes. And if things don't work out, have a plan B in mind. We've had to do that before, especially with these natural light shoots when we're dealing with swimwear and we're shooting on location. Shit's I happen. think also the biggest thing is if, if shit does go wrong, you just have to make it look like it's not going wrong. Just stay calm because... That. If you bring the nervous energy to set, if you start questioning mm -hmm. yourself, Perfect. if you go like, oh, I don't, I, yeah. Mm, it's like, yeah. they will pick up on that energy straight away and the whole shoot yeah. is going off. Absolutely. But if you play it confident, if you're like, yeah, that's amazing, I love this, they, they won't even know because it's in your head. Every single time. It's actually funny, one of my first test shoots, I was shooting my mom. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I really, I was struggling, okay? And I shot my mom and I remember I kept on looking at the viewfinder like this and I was just like, okay, uh, and fumbling around with my stuff. And one of the best like piece of advice that she gave me, she was like, Jess, every time you look down at your camera, smile and act like you took an amazing photo before yes. you look up. And every single time now when I'm shooting, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. And in my head, I'll be thinking, oh, let me fix a lot of times. I'm actually more hard on myself than everything that else that's going on. Absolutely. So yeah. with me, like, oh, the lighting, like I gotta, like, I gotta figure out a different location or a different, you know, plan B as far as like the lighting goes. So um, that was one of the best tips because one of my mm -hmm. girlfriends, she was like, wow, you're always smiling at your camera. I'm like, yeah, cause I got to. So no one thinks like, you know, things are going wrong. Cause there are times <laughs> where in my head, I'm like, whoa, everything is not going right. But you have to, have that game face every single time and just be ready. Have, um, you know, tricks up your sleeve that you can pull out in, you know, on a rainy day. And this is why I always stress, if you're starting out, you need to try all different styles of photography. Because when I first started, I actually started studio lighting, which is so backwards because a lot of people start natural lighting because all they have, mm. the, you know, the money for is for just a camera, not all the lighting equipment. But again, mm -hmm. I wanted to go full out. And I was like, I'm gonna do studio lighting. I want all the bells and whistles and all that. It's funny, the, the lights that I got, um, I still use them to this day and they're great. But anyways, um, yeah. So if I stuck with the studio lighting, I would have never been able to get, get into, you know, this natural lighting, like swimwear photography campaign situation that I see myself in often um, because I just, you know, I don't know. I, I just think it's really important to test every single situation. And then if you are dealing with an event where lighting isn't working out or you have to move locations or if you don't have enough space that you're like, OK, I've done this before because I, I, I tried mm -hmm. other things. I, you know, I've been testing. So test as much as possible, as much as possible. And yeah, I think as long as you're comfortable with your own skills, you kind of, I think it's kind of like this moment where you have to be your own best friends, tap yourself on the back and be like, I'll be okay. I know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, for sure. Because if you don't have the, com if you don't have the confidence and you start doubting yourself, that's when the problem starts. Because then you're like, Ooh, what am I doing? And then you're like, shit, the photos, the photos are bad. I don't know what to do. And it's just like, blah. Yeah. Like, if you know, if you know that, you know, regardless of the weather conditions, regardless if it's raining, regardless if it's sunny, you can perform and you will deliver the images that they like, then you're fine. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a mental game with yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we have another question um, concern, but concerning making clients happy, aren't they usually booking you based on your style and what's already in your portfolio? Absolutely. Absolutely. They do book me based on my style, but here's the thing. But that, yeah, there's yeah. a lot, but 
um, there's a couple things that like happen is that they might love my style, but they don't keep me involved as far as like the shoot location, the time of the day, all of that. Mm -hmm. they, they have to realize when I, you know, the, the images that they liked, like we, I put certain planning into like getting those types of images. So if they're not planning like me, then, you know, I can't guarantee those same results all the time. So, you know, I do try to get involved as much as possible. Um, I do ask questions. I, I try to communicate with the client as much as possible. So if they're like, yeah, we got this great location. We got these models. I'll be like, okay, who are the models? Where's the location? Mm -hmm. the time? I ask everything on my little checklist that would, you know, help me have a better uh, photo shoot experience. I ask all those questions so I can make suggestions on the front end. And then we can, you know, you know, change like the route that we take as far as like the location if need be. Cause there's been times where like a location has been selected before I even, you know, knew anything about it. And I tell them like, you know what, this might, I mean, it, I, again, always keep it on a positive note. I love your location, but I think I have another like suggestion that might even be better. Um, so I find I find that's the case for me as well. Like whenever I like whenever I get more involved in shoots, whenever I have more say, yeah. especially in terms of model and in terms of my team location, it makes it so much better because you have more creative control. You know what the light is like in a certain space and what the team that you're working with is like, because there's nothing worse when you have a beautiful location, everything is great. And then you come to set and for example, the model is like not really feeling it yeah. or she's just having an off day and she's just like not really performing. And you're like, yeah. but if you know the, especially if you know the person you've worked with her before and you know, she's amazing, that helps as well. Absolutely. Um, and I would say as far as everything's concerned, like probably the number one most important thing is lighting. Like they can tell me, okay, we got these models, we got, you know, this location, all these people are going to be on deck. Um, the first thing that I'm thinking about is, but is the lighting okay? Because if we're shooting at mm -hmm. lighting, that is the number one most important thing to me. So mm -hmm. I will, if I, if I could ask any questions, that's probably going to be the first thing. And probably it will, you know, me ask, I'll be asking about like the location of what type of lighting they have throughout the day. That'll be one of the mm -hmm. first questions I ask. So, um, so Nalise has a question. My question as a makeup artist is how uh, do you determine who you test with creatively, uh, uh, creatively? or specifically, how do you decide uh, when you were starting out? Um, well, you know, again, the power of social media. I mean, guys, like if you just go on social media and if you don't even know where to start, put your hashtag in the city that you live in and put MUA or makeup artist and you'll mm -hmm. find Tons of people to work with. Same goes with hairstylists and whatnot. And I think what I think what she's asking about more is like, what do you look for though? If you test oh, with people, like, is there any qualities so, that you look for? You know, as far as again, I I have different uh, tastes as far as like when it comes to like makeup. Sometimes I like it super super natural, and sometimes I like them to go to town, and I want them to. And you know, that's if I'm doing like a beauty shoot. So again. I determine based off the style of photography that I'll be shooting that day. If I'm doing mm -hmm. somewhere, I am definitely looking for someone that knows how to pull it back and they can keep it as natural as possible. For beauty, um, I'm gonna be you know, looking for someone that has a lot of tricks up their sleeve and they can go natural, editorial, they can do beauty, glam, all of the above, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Dave is asking, I'm curious to know how long do, do your photo shoots normally, normally, normally last? Mine seems to last forever. Yeah. I guess, you know, with, yeah. with commercial work, it obviously depends on how many looks you have. But for example, for your personal work, how, how long yeah. would you take on the photo shoot? Um, you know, typically if I'm doing like a test shoot, it could take, you know, three hours. Because like if you're considering hair and makeup, even like the most basic, Hair and makeup, mm -hmm. like they're, it's gonna be a good hour or so. And then the shooting part, if I'm testing, sometimes I'm testing all different types of lighting. So it really just depends on your game plan. And again, it just varies on what you're trying to do that day. Again, mm -hmm. lately my tests have consisted of me trying different styles of lighting. So sometimes it will take longer if I'm totally lost and I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. it out on my 
own. So yeah, it, it just, it ranges, but on average, like for one person, one look, one style of lighting, you know, two hours, if I'm doing a couple different mm -hmm. styles, three hours, you know, and that's in yeah. makeup. I find when I do my my YouTube videos and I do because I basically do them as tests and I do like maybe two or three looks it usually takes around two to three hours I feel like after that you just end up shooting the same thing and it's just like there's only so many creative things you can do um so I think um Dave also said I like that you work with a lot of um sisters showing them many shades of color I love it I love it I mean I love to celebrate you know just all women of color, even, I mean, I shoot a lot of white women too. Beautiful, I shoot beautiful people, period. And I appreciate all shapes, sizes, shades. I love it all. Like no discrimination over here. Um, but I definitely and love, it show, love it. shows in your work. It's yeah. so like, there's so much, there's so much, you know, um, diversity in terms of, you know, you have, Absolutely. you have models of different uh, skin colors. You have models of, you know, different sizes. You have like lots of beautiful plus size models. Which, as I said, I think it's 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 very admirable because your work is very very broad and it's very um, you. you can really see that you do you do so many things and you're really good at it because I know personally I I have a lot of photographers that contact me and they say like for example I can't shoot with dark skin and it always baffled me because I know that the process of shooting with like different skin colors is different the same way you know applying makeup is different but at the same time I feel like if you are considering yourself a professional photographer you should yeah. be able to approach any kind of skin color, regardless if she is, she's, you know, she's super dark or if she's pale as snow, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and for me, I don't know. I just, I never felt like it was that difficult shooting different shades. Like I, it's, it's typically just adjusting the lighting, like you either lighten yeah. it up or you dim it down, you know? So for mm -hmm. me, it was never like, you know, rocket science. It, I and I just try to embrace it all. So that was never like a thing for me. Um, but definitely, it's like it, it should be simple. It it should be uh, um, you know you just controlling how much light is coming in. And I feel like maybe I feel like maybe like when I think about it, maybe a lot of people have problems with it because they don't really know how to use their light efficiently in the first place because when you think about it right if you had a very dark model standing in the shade being yeah. like you know with having loads of light behind her then yes she's going to be really dark and you won't be able to see her and everything is yeah. going to be overexposed and it's going to be over the price so yeah. i think your your job as a photographer is to know which lighting is beneficial to what kind of skin tones you know because yeah you can do it with a girl that is pale as snow because she's going to show absolutely but if you have a darker skin tone, you have to kind of, you know, consider that and take it into right. equation. And then obviously in post-production kind of mm -hmm. try different techniques that will make the skin tone look better, um, you yeah. know, or like, you know, be a bit more com complimentary. But at the end of the day, I feel like it's something that would, same with makeup artists, you know, I had this discussion with so many of my makeup artist friends and with many models that I shot with where they would come to set and they were like, I came to set and they told me to do my own hair and makeup because they didn't even know how or the makeup artist said that she didn't bring the foundation. And I'm like, this is just heartbreaking. This shit shouldn't be happening. Yeah. You're working with professionals. Yeah. And if you're a professional, it should not be happening. Yeah, it's unacceptable. It really is. It is. It really is unacceptable. Yeah, no, people need to step it up for sure. You know, this is, hey, we're they do. COVID. Everyone's at the house. This is the time to start practicing. Everybody across the board. You know, if you're, if you're challenged in a certain area, start looking it up, start, you know, looking up YouTube tutorials, testing with some of your friends, different techniques. Um, this is the time to do it. Um, take advantage of this time while you have it. Cause like during this, um, obviously I wasn't able to shoot, but as soon as I was able to start shooting again, um, I was testing new techniques out that I've been thinking about mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite things that I like to do with women of color, if I'm shooting outside is I love direct sunlight. Love it, love it, love it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the best. It's so I good. actually, I actually had a, um, I actually had a shoot that I did. Um, it was, um, in, uh, it was in Lisbon when I was there and I was shooting, um, for, for a brand that is like, um, did they, they their clothing is basically like a, they they do clothing that is like dedicated for black women um and it was really amazing like and we were shooting direct sunlight it was so beautiful i'm just trying to 
yeah. find a photo. Oh, it's this one here. I'll just show you. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the shoot that we did. She like was so that. beautiful. It was oh, it was so it was so gorgeous. beautiful. I love the shoot oh. so much. It was like my, one of my favorite shoots that I ever did. Like the colors yeah. of the sky. Oh, this, I love it. I love it. I love it. Th this was my favorite. I love this one so much. It's just like the her skin is just there's just there, that's the thing. There's just something oh, about like dark skin when you put some body oil on it. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Queen me too. Sorry, I'm responding to someone in the comments. <laughs> Zero is uh, how do you make the water images really pop and give that wavy effect on the white and blue? I presume he's talking about the photo that I showed earlier. Of, um, sorry, I'll just push pull it yeah, up here. Yeah. Um, one second. So we'll just put it back on here, and then I'll find it. It was somewhere down here, right? Um, this one, right? I, I, that one. I presume that's just water reflections in like midday sun. Yeah, right? and then there was another one, but uh, that actually, um, the water looked like that because it was a swimming pool. So those mm -hmm. reflections, I didn't have to add anything extra. I just mm -hmm. enhanced the blues. Um, so that helped out. And again, if you shoot a little bit underexposed, you'll be able to catch all those ripples and waves and then you can bring it out mm -hmm. in public. Hundred um, percent. Okay, we have another one. Um, Dave is asking. I'm curious to know how much does your modeling experience contribute to your posing and directing clients? Oh, tons, tons, tons. I'll jump in. I'll be like, no, you got to do it like this, you know. So I, <laughs> I no problem jumping in and like you know showing like different facial expressions. But fortunately, I've been blessed. I've been able to work with some amazing models that like do their thing. But every once in a while, if I do need to jump in, I will. And I'm very big on just doing it and like having them see like I, I want the visual you know when it comes to mood boards when it comes to like if i'm trying to explain like a look that i want to have you know for that model like i'll actually do it myself so it's helped mm -hmm. immensely, immensely um steve is asking when you first started shooting professionally were you ever a victim of imposter syndrome uh, when people ask me how much i still freeze I still have imposter syndrome. Let me put it this way. <laughs> I still have moments where like I sometimes, especially even with my YouTube channel, sometimes I, you know, I do YouTube videos and I'm like, everybody must know that. Like I'm not putting in anything else. Like I have, I have a lot of self doubt and I've been working on it. I am getting better, Yeah. but it's definitely something where I constantly question my abilities and I constantly question like the value that I bring to people. <laughs> it's just oh, like, yeah. it never ends all the time i think that's like a photographer's like disease yeah. or something because like i i feel like i've heard that from all the photographers that i know mm -hmm. there's so much Absolutely. self doubt there's so much like comparing yourself to someone else don't do that like use mm -hmm. some inspiration and pull the positives out of that use them as inspiration don't compare yourself to other people because the beautiful thing about this is that we're creating art and like you know, it's not for everybody. So maybe your art is going to appeal to like a different group of people. Um, but don't, don't get caught up in comparing yourselves to others. And you know, the self doubt's going to come. It's natural. Cause like I, I deal with it all the time, but I just keep it moving. So. Absolutely. So, um, we have another good one. Uh, so, um, so sort of is saying, Anita likes to apply body oils uh, or sheen to her models when she's shooting swimmer. That's a light way to say it. I bathe them in it. Uh, what's the one thing that uh, that is a must for you to do during swimwear shoots? Oh, I mean, duh. But yeah, same thing. I mean, if you see a it lot makes such a difference. It, it makes a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. Um, especially when I'm shooting women of color. It's very necessary. Um, and I use, like, different stuff every single time. Like, I got... Like I, there's this like oil sheen, this olive oil spray that we'll put on people's bodies. Um, you know, I'll use like, there's some like sunblock out there that has like a really nice light sheen. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we go for like super oily and sometimes we go for something a little bit more natural. It really all just depends on like the aesthetic of what they're going for. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I got it all, but uh, definitely mm -hmm. something oil based is very important for sure. Absolutely. Um, I actually just, um, uh, just for you guys, because you always ask me about the body oils that I use. I actually, I think I linked it in the description below. I'm not sure. 
I did actually. There is a, a section that says body oils I recommend, and this is actually the body oils that I always use on shoots. Nice. Um, there's a few of them in there, so you can check them out if you are interested. Um, because I, I get this image, or like I get this question on like a daily basis. They're like, what oils do you use? I'm like, I'll just put it on the list so it's there. Um, okay, we'll be wrapping up soon because we're getting close to an hour and a half. So if you have any last questions, let us know. Um, so um, Devin here is asking, for self-taught photographers, where do you recommend they go to learn how to commercially edit? Uh, let me jump in first and say, if you guys want to commercially edit, check out uh, Pratik, uh, Pratik's course, Solstice oh, Retouch. Yeah. He yeah. does like a retouching, I think it's called retouching series. That's actually what it's called. And it's like $90, I think. And it's literally like 36 classes of all potential or all possible uh, retouching techniques. So I find that's like really, really good. Um, other than that, I think I recommend YouTube mostly because it's free yeah. and yeah. you have access yeah. to all of that. Yeah. How did you learn? Yeah, no, YouTube, YouTube. Like, I and I was obsessed with it. Like all I would do, I would mm. spend hours and hours and hours editing. Um, you know, I still edit. I got to edit some stuff after this call. But uh, yeah, no, like I start off YouTube and just... You know, there's there's some classes out there too. Like the one that she, she suggested is great. Um, I haven't taken it myself, but I know he's well known for like his mm -hmm. his editing and it's commercial and at a commercial level. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's definitely important to learn it um, because yeah, we do outsource. Okay, but mm -hmm. I have been in many situations where I've had to scale back on the retouching, and because I know how to retouch, and I originally was like really focused on retouching after my shoots, I can fix things quickly. So I think it's important to understand retouching, um, whether yeah. or not you choose to outsource or do it all on your own, like really know the ins and outs of it for sure. I think that's the thing when I was learning retouching, I still learned it to a level where I was really happy with it. And now yeah. I outsource yeah. just because it's a luxury that I can afford at this point. Yeah. And I can just put more of my, creative effort into shooting which i enjoy more yeah. Um, yeah and also you know with with doing youtube and stuff i pretty much like i have a lot of stuff to consider like i have the videos i have the photos yeah. i have all the planning of the shoot doing the shoot yeah. so all yeah. the time it's just easier for me to not do it myself right. but it is important that as you said you can if, if there is a need if you're working for a client and they're like oh i need to change this and that and you're like waiting for a retoucher and the retoucher yeah. is you know, sleeping and they have their phone off and then you're like, oh shit, what do I do? I have no idea what to do. Yeah. And that's when the problem starts, when you are dependent on this thing, you know? Oh yeah, no, it's definitely a problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Paul is asking, what's the most valuable lesson you've learned in your photography career? Um, You know, for me, gosh, there's so many lessons. Like, I don't even know where to start, but one, one of the most important things for me, and it depends on like, you know, like, your motivation behind the photography. I'm hoping that people are, of course, getting into it because they love it, they appreciate art, they love photography. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if you're doing it as a profession, you also want to get money. So I think, like, it's very important to have, like, a business mindset as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're dealing with uh, photography. Because some people are like, why am I not getting books? You have to have a business mindset. You have mm -hmm. to understand and how to market yourself um, and get your work out there. Because if people don't know about you, you're not going to get booked, period. Mm -hmm. so and another thing, I, another thing I find out, I found out personally from my personal experience is I've always, I've always been of like attitude to always be like very, I've never really like talked about my work. I never really, you know, I was a bit like too humble for my own good where I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay, I'm doing fine. Like, you have to hype yourself up. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm fucking amazing. Like I'm the best bug for you, obviously. Not in, a, not in an egotistic way, but you do have to be your own best, you know, um, you have to you have to know how to like hype yourself up because if you don't do that, nobody else will do it for you. Like your right. other photographer friends will, will do it for you. Like, yeah, your work speaks for yourself. But at the same time, you still have to have the presence that people yeah. will want to be around. Very important. Very important. Okay. Um, Baha is dying to know uh, what false lashes are you wearing, number and brand? You know what is so <laughs> crazy, though? Okay. So, oh, man, I wish I knew the name. And I'm like, 
I feel like I'm going to smack myself on the wrist for this, but the company that I'm wearing, they actually named these lashes after me. So I'm wearing the Jesse lashes. Oh. Yeah, they were like, we're, we love how you're all about female empowerment. We're going to name these lashes after you. And we're going to send you some pairs. And I actually really like them. So <laughs> I will, you know what? I'll make sure to post it um, yeah. on my I it. story like later today. Yeah. Like stay tuned. I'll, I'll post that. Um, Baha is actually my video editor for those of you who don't know, so you can tell me as well and I'll tell him. <laughs> um, okay, we'll take like two last questions. Um, okay, we have Roberto here who said that he's in Spain, but he can assist you. So I don't know if that's something that you'd be interested in if, if you need someone from abroad. Thank you, Roberto. Um, um, okay, so let's see. I'm just trying to see. The minute I say we're wrapping up, there's always like 300 comments can, popping in. I can answer more questions. This is awesome. So Zero is asking, uh, do you use a reflector when you are shooting direct sunlight? And if so, what color reflector works best with the, with what type of skin tone? I, 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 a lot of times I'm working with just the sun and the model. Like I'll have the reflector. It's It's actually crazy. I bring the reflector often and like more times Never I, use it. I don't even use it because I love yeah. it. I embrace the sunlight. It, it becomes my friend. I become one with the sun and we just make it work. Like it's literally just following the sun, figuring out what direction it's coming down. I'm like, okay, just switch it up. It's only if I, you know, if the shadow is so crazy out of control, we'll, we'll throw it in. But I, I stopped using that. I used to use it all the time. Now I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm the other way. I've never used it. I've never used the reflector before. Yeah. And now yeah. the last few shoots, I actually used it. And I did, I did like it. So I definitely want to experiment more with it. Yeah. And I want to experiment more with like um, flash on location. The only thing is like when you're shooting at the beach, it's such a nightmare because like, yeah. the model moves like 10 centimeters and the whole thing changes and you have to readjust and so on so it is very difficult but yeah. i did like the challenge and i like it like i did like the fact that i put myself out of my comfort zone and did something that was definitely out of the box for me so it was definitely fun um yeah. okay let's take this as the last question from a business perspective would you suggest focusing on one or the other retouching or photography while it's more than beneficial to do both uh, from a time perspective it can be overwhelming Oh, photography, hands down. I'm really big on making sure the image like that is shot looks great out of the camera. I used to be like, oh, we can fix that in Photoshop. No, I, I no. mindset, like I have totally gotten rid of that. It's a terrible mindset to have because sometimes you can't fix it. <laughs> you know, you keep on telling yourself that and it ends up like taking up a lot of time. Because you don't want to. It takes you know, it takes so much time and effort and it's just the photo never looks as good. That's the problem. While you are there, okay, figure out what needs to be fixed. Maybe the hair needs to be fixed and the makeup's off. Fix it. Take that extra time. You, you're you doing yourself a huge favor because the retouching, sometimes the retouching might not even fix it all the way. So, mm -hmm. um, no retouching because it is necessary. It helps even if you outsource, like you might get some crap back and you got to fix it, um, learn it, but don't solely rely on that or make that priority over photography. Like the images, they need to be quality out of the camera for sure. That's the thing. It's just like, I find, and I'm sure it's the same with you. Like nowadays when I take photos, I barely even have to do anything to the images. A lot, a lot of the time I just look at them and I color grade them and I'm happy out. I don't even need yeah. to skin retouching because if you use the right lighting in the right situation, that eliminates all of that. So right. as long as you, I think the most important thing is that you need neither photography nor retouching. It's understanding the light first. Mm -hmm. And once you understand the light, it's like everything kind of falls into place, but it obviously takes some time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you so much for this amazing live. I enjoyed it so much. Wow. All these people coming. It was incredible. Love. This is amazing. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was. Yeah. This is awesome. Like, you can um, oh. girl. Just as a sign of note, um, Jesse here said that she is planning on doing YouTube, right? And yeah. some classes. Yeah. So, um, so we will be waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I need to get on it. This is the time to work on it. So, yeah, I got some things to work on. 
one-on-one -on -one classes for now with COVID and everything. And then, um, yeah, I will be waking up with a local videographer. We'll be doing some, starting off with just some behind the scenes stuff. But um, yeah, it's definitely uh, coming down the pipeline, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, so yeah. if you guys have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see from Jessie, you can message her on her Instagram and let her know. Sorry, sorry in advance for the spam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, this this video is going to be live. You can check uh, Jesse down below. I let, I linked her down. Um, you can have a look. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our hour and a half, and I hope um, everybody will have a lovely evening. And I will Bye. see you guys soon. And thanks again, Jesse. Okay. Thank you so Bye -bye, much. Everyone. Um, <laughs> Bye, yeah. everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.